Welcome back to Inner Warm Up, where your inner work begins. My name is Taylor Elise Morrison, and I'm the founder of Inner Workout, and you, as always, are our expert guest. But we're doing something special, and so we've got another guest on board today. I am so excited to be bringing our Taking Care With series off of video and onto this podcast. So, If you haven't heard of Taking Care With before, we ask someone in our community to take the Take Care Assessment and to share with us what helps them have a really healthy relationship to one of the sub-dimensions. So we look at wherever they scored highest and ask them about it, what it looks like in their life. In true inner workout and inner warm-up fashion, it's not about giving you a list of things that you have to do. Don't feel obligated to steal anyone's process. It's just more information that you can then use to learn more about yourself. And that's ultimately the goal. So with all of that being said, I am so excited to introduce you to Fair Desuti Sarun, who is the, one of the co-founders of MindTerra. She's got background and experience in healthcare, and Fair, I feel like you can do yourself more justice. So tell us a little bit more about you. Thanks, Taylor. I'm also so excited to be here to talk about how we take care of each other. So I am... One of the co-founders of MindTerra, as you said, we are a community and platform that uses expressive writing and journaling um, to care for mental well-being. I'm also currently a consultant in healthcare data. And so I've been really kind of translating bits and bobs of my works to kind of improve access to healthcare. And that's really my North Star. Ooh, I really love that. And I'm curious what got you interested in healthcare, like in coming at it from two completely different perspectives. You've got one where like you're in action, helping people work through their own mental health, especially. And then in your consulting job, I'm envisioning it looks really different, Um, but there is that through line. So what got you interested in engaging with health and mental health? Yes. Such a great question, Taylor. I sort of have always been interested in healthcare because both my parents have chronic health conditions Mm -hmm. and I always feel unsatisfied with the way that people approach health right now, especially the industry itself. At my current job, I work with pharmaceutical companies a lot. I work with hospital systems and really seeing that inside makes me also see those cracks, right, of where we can do better. And one of the ways and one of the things that I'm really passionate about is preventative health. And so with my entire, I really want people to take mental health into their own hands and see where they can be proactive and own that. And I think that's what I love about Inner Workout as well. It's we're proactively preventing people having conditions and, and mental health illnesses. I love that. And even before you brought it, I was just going to say for people who don't know, we we did a cool partnership with MindTerra recently where they brought some beautiful journaling prompts and we had a week in the community to be able to just practice expressing ourselves and simple things like that, like journaling, like writing creatively can make such a huge difference in our mental health. Mm-hmm. And it is really important. I also did not expect to go here, but I'll I'll just say a little aside because I have a sense that you might feel the same way. Mm -hmm. But pharmaceutical companies or hospitals, like they make money from doing surgeries or they make money from doing these other things. So they're not as incentivized to give people these tools. Health insurance companies a little bit more so because they don't want to foot the bill. Mm -hmm. But yeah, our healthcare system, there's so much work to be done here. And I'm glad that people like you are looking at how best to do that work. Yes, completely, completely. And I feel like we are taking steps to go there with especially the emphasis on value-based care. At the same time, I really see health as 
a holistic experience, right? Where it's not just medicine, um, surgeries and things like that, as you say, but what are some even just daily practices and rituals that we can do to nourish our health? So seeing it that way and not just, oh, I will develop a condition and I will fix it or treat it later. Yeah. It takes a flip. Mm. Um, And this is interesting having this conversation because in your take care assessment, the area that you scored highest in was this connection to something bigger. And for those of you who are new to our five dimensions of well being, that falls under the bliss dimension, which is all about connection. Connection to something bigger is exactly what it sounds like. Seeing that you are a part of the universe, you're part of something outside of you. And Fair, I'm I'm so curious to hear what that means to you. Were you surprised when you saw that that was your highest scoring area? I was not surprised that bliss as a dimension itself was my highest scoring um, dimension. I consider myself a pretty joyous person. See, and I think a lot of my friends and family would describe me as someone who's very optimistic. And so finding kind of joy in the small moments, I was a little surprised to see that connection to something bigger was the highest scoring one. Although I think that one of the things that sort of inspired this and is ever more present to me right now is our connection to nature and how we are part of something so much bigger than ourselves. And the more I reflect within me, the more I feel that I want to be part of this. And I I don't even want to, I am already part of this universe. And I think like one thing that I often hear, I've heard a quote before was that, you know, we're actually cosmic stardust, right? In In this human body. And I love that concept and idea because it just makes you appreciate life so much more. It's so much more magical when you think about it that way. Yeah. Just that little perspective shift of like, oh yeah, there is, there are literally pieces of the universe that are inside of me. And something that I heard you say there was that this is something that's been becoming more present for you. Mm -hmm. So can you share a little bit of your journey with relating to nature? Mm, Yeah, I grew up really in a big city. I am actually from Bangkok, Thailand, and it's a bustling place, lots of buildings. And I didn't really have access to kind of nature or forests or animals and, and kind of that aspect. I do remember kind of going on trips with my parents out into the countryside and running around in this really huge field. And that's something that stuck with me. More recently, I have been taking trips to kind of more nature-y places, um, national parks. One of the trips that I think really flipped it for me was when I visited Iceland. And in Iceland, if for those who've never been before, it's this island, which is kind of excluded from the European continent. And within kind of a lot of times when you're traveling, you'll see no one and no buildings, no man-made things at all. It's just a vast place of nature. And I think that just made me realize, wow, when I came back to Philadelphia, how there's so much noise around us and how there are things that we created, humans created that are surrounding us. And so I think that flipped the switch for me. Wow. That sounds lovely too. And I feel like um, Iceland is one of those places that you see on Instagram a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And so even though I haven't been there, I can get a sense of like the landscape and the beauty Mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So once you got back to Philadelphia and now have lived through a pandemic and are living through a pandemic, Mm -hmm. what does that look like in your day to day? Since I'm guessing, and maybe you're super lucky, but I'm guessing you can't jet off to (laughs) Iceland every month. No. Yeah. I'm lucky that where I live, I live in the suburbs of Philadelphia, that we still have access to quite nice trails that can still make us feel like, you know, we're, we're in a forest or a jungle. 
But I think for my every day to day, just taking walks in the neighborhood, I've been really lucky to be able to do that. Looking at kind of gardens and plants of people in the neighborhood, sometimes it just sparks that within me. I also have a daily meditation practice. And a part of that practice is also called meta meditation, where you think of other beings, other, you know, nature, animals, people in your life, and even strangers who you've never met before and spreading kindness and love um, for them. And so that's such an essential part of my meditation practice to stay connected to what I really think is something bigger than ourselves. I love that. That's one of my favorite practices as well, especially Mm. during this time when you can't see people Mm. as often as you might like to, or even friends who live far away, but we, the events that we normally see each other at, like the weddings, those different things aren't happening, but just to pause and send someone kindness and love Mm. is like thinking about it. Um, I get a little teary eyed because those can be such powerful moments. Mm -hmm. And even as you were saying that I have not explored doing something like that. I'm looking up for you. No one can see, um, but (laughs) except for fair, but I'm looking up because outside of my window, there are these trees and I'm like, what if I did that with like trees or Mm -hmm. before, um, right before we hopped on, I was walking my dog and he had this like interaction with a bird and he wasn't sure what to do. It was so interesting, but like his acute awareness of this other being that sometimes I just completely disregard was a reminder of, oh, like, yeah, I am part of this whole situation. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though I'm in this metal and brick building, I Mm. I still come from nature. Yeah, I I love that. And I think sometimes uh, you walk your dog and that happened because I think sometimes animals are also more sensitive to that than us. And they have this livelihood with other connections, other beings that I feel like sometimes I'm inspired, you know, if if you see dogs running around and chasing each other, they're having so much fun. They really are. They're so present. That's what I feel like dogs Mm -hmm. in any animal really can teach us. Yeah, so true. Like my dog is, I mean, he's underneath the desk right now and <laughs> he's just like really into, I think he has something on his foot cause he's looking his foot, but that's like the only thing happening in the world to him right now. Mm. So interesting. Mm. And I think you bring such a great point that it's, it's that presence that really makes you feel alive. And I think it's also one of the keys to that connection as well if you're not present, it's hard to get alive to that magic of that you're part of something, of your part of this universe and this community of beings. Mm. That's very true. Everything else in nature has, I feel like this is true. Maybe this is just a feeling, but I feel like it's much easier for a tree or a dog to be present because they're not having to deal with all of those all of this technology, mm. um, even though it can do beautiful things like connect yeah. us so that we're able to record this. Yeah. We have a, a lot to learn from nature. Mm-hmm. I think the mind, being able to quiet down the mind um, and be focused on the present. Yeah. Tell me, so you mentioned your meditation practice. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else? And I'll, I'll do like an aside right here. What I I love is even in this conversation, like we're seeing overlap from the wisdom dimension, which is a lot about presence and how that bleeds into our ability to connect, but Mm -hmm. okay. Aside over Um, (laughs) outside of your meditation practice, what helps you quiet your mind? What helps you get into the present moment? Mm. What helps me? I think Currently, I'm exploring using all my senses. Mm -hmm. Um, It's something that sounds quite funny and sounds very simple as well. But I feel like we take them for granted, especially as an able-bodied person who's very privileged. I recognize that nowadays when we do things, for example, eating food, we're 
often occupied with something. Um, you know, we might be watching TV, we might be talking to other people. And when you eat food, I think there's actually so much going on. Sometimes I have this sensory overload, um, but there's the taste, there's the smell, there's the, um, the sound when you chew or when you look at your food. And so it's interesting that sometimes just being able to focus on each sense as you do something so simple like eating can just really get you so present. I love that you mentioned that, Bear, because I'll link to this in the show notes and I'll share it with you um, when it comes out. But I just recorded walking meditation with Meryl for the great outdoors month. And Mm -hmm. the, it's all about using your five senses and like, can you walk through nature and like really feel and see Mm -hmm. and hear and touch and experience the textures? Because even if you do get outside, Mm -hmm. sometimes it's just like, I'm walking my dog or I've got to go put this in the mailbox Mm. and we forget that like that could be a very sensory experience if you Mm. allowed it to be. I'm so excited for that. I would love to do that meditation when I go on my next walk. I completely agree with you that I think we see everything now as a task or as a to do on Mm. our list. And it's like, okay, I have to do this. I have to do that. And then you forget to enjoy that experience through your, like you said, kind of senses. So how can we just not take things off our boxes, but actually be in it as well? And I I feel like that is just such a lovely note to end it on. You brought it back full circle with the joy piece, because in being connected to something bigger, like nature or to spiritual practice, like that allows us to have a more joy-filled experience. And Mm -hmm. I I want that. (laughs) (laughs) Don't we all? Yeah. I, I love that you, it's really full circle. It's, you know, being connected to something bigger than yourselves. You can't do that without being present and focused and aligned with who you are as a person and also what you are part of in this really big universe. So (laughs) I love it. And I am just like beaming as I'm talking to you. I bet there are folks who are listening and who are nodding along and are like, okay, where can I get more insights or where can I kind of have fair be a mirror for some of my journey? So this is your open invitation to share where folks can find you. Yes. I'm so excited for that. Well, I would love to hear from you if you're interested. So Mindterra, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. It's at mindterra.co. And I'm pretty active on there. We have weekly writing verandas that I think Taylor mentioned earlier. Um, You joined us and that is a space for our community to come together and really journal and see where where it goes to really dive deeper into ourselves. I also have a newsletter that's upcoming to guide us through kind of simple ways of improving our mental well-being. So can also subscribe. Um, It's on Substack. I can maybe send you the link. Yeah, we'll include the link in the blog post and in the show notes. Yeah, but thank you so much for having me, Taylor. Thank you for this conversation. You are my second to last meeting of the day. And I, it just gave me new energy to enter into what I have left of my day. You have such a beautiful energy. I'm oh. so appreciative of you. I'm so glad and so honored to be here as well, talking to you. Well, thank you everyone for joining. I hope that even though there's not the normal built in time to reflect in this episode, that you will take a moment to pause and think about what connecting to something bigger can look like for you over the course of the rest of the week. Thank you for your time and take care.